James, I guess before Sunday, how many conversations have you had with Greg Hudson? How well do you know him? Uh, you know, he was he was upstairs doing a lot of a lot of the work with the coaches, but he's been around. You know, he's been, you know, I, I've seen him around more, mainly up at training table. Uh, but uh, you know, he, he's a, he's been a fun guy to have around. You know, as a player, you don't really know his exact role when you have a couple guys, you know, doing you know upstairs office work. Uh, but he's still a guy that's been engaged in talking to all the players, and I, I think pretty much every player knew who he was, even though he wasn't out on the field, you know, coaching us every single day. So I, I've had fun and jokes with him already before uh, he became my coach. So, so what was he like in practice? Uh, you know, him getting his hands on you guys a little bit. Yeah, uh, you know, he brings that same energy as he would eating dinner to the field. You know, he he's always using different examples, different stories, a little bit of humor in his coaching um, and, and an energy. Uh, there hasn't been a day he's been here that I've really seen him just walking around monotone. Uh, he's always gotten some energy and something to say. So brought that same thing to practice yesterday. And is that, at this point for you guys, is that more important than like, ooh, he has a great play call here on third down, just that energy aspect of it? Yeah, I think that I think that's a great aspect of it. Uh, just having somebody that adds to the energy of the defense um, is something that I think he's definitely bringing. And just lastly, I mean, what was your reaction when you found out that that Brian Van Gorder had been fired? I mean, was that shocking to you? Um, How did you sort of process that? Yeah, you know, I, I obviously everybody was talking about it, um, and you know, even our student section seemed to. Uh, have a strong stance on that, um, but you know it, it was shocking to me. I, obviously, this is the only defensive experience I've ever had. He, he's really all I knew defensively, um, so you know it, it's difficult for some some older guys, you know, and, and me included, to you know put that aside and just take the next step into something new. So uh, you know I, I'll continue my relationship with Coach Van Gorder and uh, you know possibly still learn things from him, but. Um, I'm on to the next step and excited for Coach Hudson to get us rolling. James, Coach Kelly said yesterday that he, he's sure that, you know, there are varying degrees of reaction among the defensive players. Um, I mean, were you one of the guys that was closest to him and, and it impacted you as, as much as anyone? Yeah, I think, you know, everybody had their different relationship with him, you know, uh, and, and that's going to happen with any coach. I think that, especially since I was new to defense, that I really tried to dedicate a lot of my time to sitting down with the head man and trying to learn exa straight, straight from him. Uh, so, you know, some of those meetings and, you know, sit downs with him and, you know, even explaining, you know, a little bit about myself since, you know, we, we got to know each other a little bit along the way, uh, you know, that, that helps with that off the field relationship. Um, so, yeah, I would say I was maybe one of the closer guys. When speaking, not that we had a ton of opportunities to speak with him, but when speaking with him, he almost always spoke very highly of you. What was your impression as to what he liked about you? You know, he, he was a guy that had high expectations for everybody and expected uh, people to do their job every single snap. So I think that, that that's one thing that, you know, he respected from me uh, and that I, that I took this, this game and this team very seriously. Uh, you know, I felt if I were to mess up even in practice, you know, I feel that weight and I think that he could see that. And, you know, uh, I, I've just always felt as if you know, everything I do reflects my teammates. And, uh, you know, he, he stood by that. I'm sure you had a conversation with him. It's personal. I'm not trying to get into all of that. But if you can just generalize what your goodbye it sounds like you're going to stay in contact with him though but i mean what what that initial contact after the news was like um for me it was just you know thanks for the opportunity because uh without him uh he he was really the one that gave me the opportunity and you know spent the time and invested in me to be able to play defense and to be able to be where I'm at today. So just, uh, you know, quick, thanks for, thanks for the opportunity and the time that you've spent with me. Um, you know, it, it, I don't think it's a huge goodbye. It's like anybody you work with, right? It's, just, it's a business, you know, uh, stay in contact and uh, hope you, you know, your next step is a good one, you know? Thanks, James. James.
going in that same theme. Is there a sense of guilt or responsibility among the players? I mean, obviously the coach gets fired, and the next thing everyone's going to look at is if you still don't play up to your capabilities, well, obviously the, the players must be doing something wrong. I mean, is there a – obviously there's a sense of urgency when you're one and three, but is that driven home even more now that uh, there have been changes made? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, as a unit, right, like the – like I always say, the coaches are in it with us. They they have a play a role in that. So obviously he's going to be the first to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think the whole defense knows that we need to play better ball. And uh, obviously, if we were playing better ball, that maybe not would have happened. But uh, that's all in the past now. So just focusing on you know the players and what we can do from here. How do you, I guess, you Isaac Cole and some of the other senior leaders on, on the side of the ball just try to drive that point home to the younger guys that you know obviously is. It's a serious matter now. There's no more joking around. Yeah, uh, you know, I think a couple minor changes in the in the locker room, in the you know film room, and obviously we've made some changes on the field and schematically. So, um, I think that you know that gives some of these younger guys a pretty good idea when they don't see the same guy in there coaching them. Yeah, they, they've got an idea of what's going on. James down the middle here. Coach Kelly mentioned like streamlining the defense. He didn't necessarily say like it was going to be simplified but what do you think or what does streamlining mean and what has that meant this week so far um obviously not going to go too into you know the schematics of our of our defense but uh, obviously there's some some changes that the coaches have made uh trying to put players in the best position to make plays and um you know making changes from what wasn't working before so i think he mentioned you know, the streamlining part also can get, you know, a guy like Asmar into a game or, you know, some of the younger guys. Have you seen them kind of take to maybe getting an increased role a little bit so far in practice this week? Yeah, I mean, it's been talked about, uh, you know, with the re their reps have been increased. So uh, I think it's definitely likely for those guys to get a little bit more PT in, in the game. Um, so, yeah, I think that, you know, a couple minor changes in the defense uh, can help with that. I think Pete asked this to McGlinchey, but it was kind of, you know, do some younger players still need to understand that how you prepare during the week affects, you know, it's not just about how you play on Saturday, it's about how you sort of prepare during the week. And Mike's response was like, prepare like a champion almost. Do you kind of sense that you need to drive that point home with some of the younger guys going forward? Yeah, I mean, we've always tried to prepare to the best of our ability. Uh, you know, we've practiced hard. I think that it's just the fact that we need to start practicing a little bit smarter. And, you know, the coaches have made a couple changes, like I said, so practices are a little bit different. Um, still practicing with great intensity and, uh, you know, continuing to push these younger guys to focus in on their job. Like practice smarter, like focus on <clears throat> the, the right things. What, what do you mean by that, practice smarter? Um, I think that it includes reps. It includes uh, fundamentals. It includes um, conceptual uh, conceptual periods. Um, so really focusing on things like that, I think would you know be the aspect of practicing smarter. Thanks, James. Top right. Did you prior to this? Did you notice a lack of passion in preparations? Was I, I'm sure it could be somewhat different week to week because. You know, it's human nature that can be different week to week, but did you ever yeah. notice that, or is it something that you've kind of been made aware of now? No, no, I think, uh, I, I think, you know, at least our one defense is practiced hard all year long, and the intensity in practice is, you know, pretty serious and uh, has been the same as previous years, so. It's just something where you, it's almost got to trickle down more? Yeah, I think, I, day, I think so, the yeah. trickle down, exactly, uh, making sure that some of the younger guys are practicing uh, just as hard as I am. It's huge. James, right over here. Um, obviously, it's kind of a fresh start when you have a new coach. Do you feel like there's been any difference in you know, rejuvenation or a different attitude or a different energy this week? Have you noticed anything different from your guys in that sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that also giving you know, some of the twos and threes serious reps uh, engages everybody, right? So, um, you know, we have a whole sideline that's, you know, engaged with what's going on in practice, and that changes the mentality and, you know, the uh, excitement a little bit. Just, it sounds like Coach Kelly is getting more involved this week with the defense. In what way can, has you, have you seen him being more involved? Uh, even being over on the defensive field, 
Uh, you know, he wasn't over there much unless we were going against the offense. And uh, having him around has helped a ton. You know, having the head man around when you're doing your drills and uh, doing, you know, nine on seven or team, whatever it is, you know, brings a little bit extra intensity to whatever you're practicing. So having him around and coaching us up and being involved in what our game plan is, I think has helped bring, you know, a sense of urgency to a lot of the guys on the defense. Thank you. James, Coach Kelly talked about how one of the things he's going to try to do is get more guys in the rotation. Um, he thinks fatigue may have played a factor in some of the missed tackles, um, some of the performance. Is that something you see, something you recognize? Yeah, I think, I, I think it can play a role. Uh, you know, we're, we're all in pretty good shape, but when you're playing, you know, 100 snaps, 70, 80 snaps, whatever it is, uh, by your 70 or 80th snap, you're obviously not going to be as fresh as you were in the beginning of the game. So if you can get a series off or two even, um, uh, that makes your 70 and 80th rep, you know, much more valuable. And also we talked a lot about energy, kind of ha having fun out there again. Is that something that can influence how you play as well, how you perform? And if so, in what way? Yeah, I, I, I think it can play something, you know. Uh, if you can't get excited to go out and play for the University of Notre Dame, uh, I mean, then we've got a problem. But, you know, just making sure that guys are practicing like that all week is, a, I think, more of the emphasis. Syracuse, an up-tempo opponent or offense just like Texas was. But are there any differences you see in how they run their offense? Not much, I, not much of a difference. Uh, a little bit different back, backfield style. Um, and the receivers ha have some pretty good speed. So, uh, you know, them pressing the field and stretching the field is going to be huge in their, in their schematic, uh, you know, in, in what they're trying to do.